I'd like to call the April 15, 2024 meeting of the City Council for the City of Lake City to order. If everyone was stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invitation to be given by Council Member Richard Turner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. God, thank you for all creation. Look over this council. Help us to make the decision that is pleasing in your sight. Look over our first responders and all of our armed forces in our area and abroad. Special prayer for the Hill family and the Young family. In God's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Jarnigan? Present. Mr. Dill? Mr. Ms. Young? Mr. Carter? Present. Mayor Witt? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Martin? Here. Chief Butler? Here. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, the Lake City Council has opened this public meeting. Since 1968, the city council has prohibited any personal person from making personal and personal slanderous remarks from the common voters by addressing the city council. Yelling or making audible comments on knowledge constitutes political conduct. Such conduct will not be tolerated. There is only one approved manner of addressing the city council that can be recognized as speak of the public. As a reminder, persons are not openly carry a handgun. Or carry a concealed weapon or firearm by the government body of the meeting. They have to abide by the rule of the court or result of approval from the meeting. Okay, first is uh, approval of the agenda, and because we don't have our full council, I think we only have three, uh, I'm asking that item 6, 7, and 16 be reviewed because I think they are items that need to be discussed by the full council. So we have a motion to approve that. So, so move, Mayor. Okay, we got a motion and a second to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor, sir? Aye. Aye. Okay, proclamation. We have youth membership. Okay, uh, youth leadership week, April 24th through the 30th, 2024. Whereas the annual celebration of National Student Leadership Week began on national level in 1972 by President Pro Proclamation, and students across the entire city of Lake City and schools that are public, private, and in home school settings demonstrate leadership in the classroom while soaring above their academic expectations and leadership within academic, social, athletic, and community groups. Whereas student leaders make significant contributions to the climate and culture of their schools and community, it's important to celebrate their individual collective effort. Whereas we believe students have earned their right to be recognized by for the entire week of April 24th through the 30th, 2024. Now, therefore, I, Stephen M. Wood, Mayor of the City of Lake City, to your back for claim the week of April 24th through the 30th as Youth Leadership Week. Joining the celebration of youth leaders sponsored by our community cares and community partners and co citizen businesses and government agencies to join in acknowledging the success of youth leadership throughout the community. I think we have uh, Victoria and Michael uh, Coker here. If y'all would like to come down. Thank you. 
Telecommunicators are the first contact our residents have with emergency services. Whereas these unseen first responders provide an essential service to the community and to police and emergency personnel with compassion, understanding, and professionalism. Whereas the public safety agencies nationwide <coughs> celebrate how important public safety telecommunication are providing support to law our emergency medical services and other government field personnel. Whereas in 1991, Congress proclaimed the second week of April as a national noted week of recognition dedicated to the men and women who serve as public safety telecommunicators. And whereas Lake City wishes to recognize our public safety telecommunicators for their commitment to performing their duty with integrity and accountability and respect at the highest level. I therefore ask Stephen M. Witt, Mayor of the City of Lake City, to hear back the April 14th through the 20th, 2024. The National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in the City of Lake City to hereby recognize the Lake City Public Safety Telecommunicators for the outstanding service and commitment to the citizens of Lake City and Columbia County. Thank you. Okay. We have public comments. Uh, I have some that are on items that were removed from the agenda, so I'm assuming people don't want to speak if we're not bringing it up. The first one I have is says football group. They're, they're, they're coming in. Now. That's the football group right there, man. Okay, while they're coming in, let me call Mary Carter. Come on. You can state your name. My name is Mary Carter. Hi. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I was wanting to find out who do I need to talk to in the community that I need to speak within the community I have been constantly complaining about talking to the police talking to the sheriff department people and they kept calling 911 dishes dogs instead of coming over on my property instead of getting to the door and we can't get in the house and they are uh, barking and running us away from the door so the police is witnessing the, some of the share and then they say they can't do anything about it so when you talk to the uh, you know, they say you have to get in contact with the animal service. You get in contact with them, they come out and say, well, we done gave them a warning. And uh, they, they, uh, and they done been told that they, uh, they catch them untied again and running it all back and forth across the street. Right. And they somebody send them over there on, on me because of my property and stuff. They want to ride four wheelers and cars and everything, motorcycles across it, and I don't know why, because it's costing me too much to keep up my property for other people to run it up. And so people do little vicious things and do what they do, but there's no law for it. And they've attacked my granddaughter before, the male person had to tase them, they vicious dogs. And they got them over there in the house where they've uh, uh, been raising them and got dogs over there, and they all know it. The police, the sheriff department, and, everything, and they have to pull over, they keep from hitting them, going back and forth across the road. So uh, what do the uh, uh, dog service, or whatever they call management, what are they supposed to do? There's no law for nobody, and they say until they do something to somebody, then, you know, other words, until they bite you, or until they do something, then there's something they can do. Because that'll be uh, 911 emergency. It, it, it should be the Humane Society uh, trial again if they don't let Mr. Johnson know. And, uh, Who is Ms. Johnson? Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this is my, my granddaughter. I mean, my sister. Right. This is her granddaughter. That's my sister. She got Down syndrome. They can't get in the house. And I'm telling you, I have my grandma. She don't come to me. But I'm telling you today. I'm telling you today. I'm telling you. Well, talk to your chief. I'm telling you, it's going to be some two two threes and some five five sixes fired off 
over there in that neighborhood if my goddamn sister can't get in the house. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, no, 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 no. This is a Down syndrome child. No, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. This is my sister. She got Down syndrome. My grandmother's the black, first black ALF only in here. Y'all gonna respect her and do something about the dog. An 80 year old lady and a Down syndrome child cannot get in their house. You must be crazy here in Lake City. But you got all these police in here. Remove the dog's mail and send the goddamn city manager to do something about it. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't point order my ass. I'm out of hey, sister. I'm not another customer. That's my sister. That's just a warrant. I, I know that's your sister, and I'm here to complain, and we're going to address it. Today. Well, I, I, I can't call it today. I, I tell you what, Mayor, we'll fix it today. One okay. more look. All right. All right. So you just know that. And don't send nobody in my way. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Y'all go home. It'll be fixed today. One more look. We'll fix it today, come on. Okay, has the football group been here? Go ahead, go ahead, I promise you. They don't, you don't, they don't put on the record and they don't put on notes. Yeah. You don't tell me it's enough. Yes, yeah, you don't tell me enough. You don't tell me what to do. Oh, yeah. Hey, you, hey, hey. hey. You, so you are. Now, you everybody. Are. You, you are you, disrupting. You ain't, you ain't nobody. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Everybody you know this. Got so white. And everybody stop. Yeah. And the next person, listen to me. The next person that speaks from the audience, yes, I'm asking him to remove you. Period. We're going to have an order and we're going to run a meeting. Excuse me, sir. You're speaking to who? I'm speaking to anybody in the audience. Yes, I read here, speaking from the audience without permission is grounds to be removed. And I'm asking y'all not to do it. Okay. I'm asking for the football group to come forward. If they want to speak. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Angel Martin. Um, this is our president, Bam, of the Kind Forest. Um, rather, Mario Wiggins. Oh, sorry. Mario Wiggins. <laughs> this is Kurt Bruins, Maurice Rosen, Alicia Fudge, Kenneth Shade, and Kevin Young. We're all part of a um, sports organization under Mario Wiggins. He's out of Jacksonville. Um, he's offered us help, and we're playing up under him, but we're playing in Lake City. We practice in Lake City, but we travel to Jacksonville to play AAU basketball. And um, we're just asking the city for some help as far as funding the animatics part, because starting in the fall, we want to um, start the organization at the animatics park. So we're just asking for some help for um, like equipment and getting things going to get the, the, youth, the youth of the community to um, sign up for the sports in the community. We got cheerleading and football right now, so we already got two teams and we're going to have four football teams. Is it for the fall? Yes, sir. We're doing um, eight on eight right now in Jacksonville, but we're practicing at the Animatics Park right now. Okay. I don't know. Did we ever do a forum for uh, applications for fun? No, ma'am. It should be on the next agenda. Okay. We're going to get a form that you can do to yes, get with our staff in a couple of weeks and you can do an application and we'll see what we can do for you. Mayor, may, may I ask a question there? Yeah, sir. Uh, my, my, my question is, uh, is are y'all the football team? Are y'all the coaches? Y'all the players? So I'm, um, I'm the president of the bar. Uh, I got two organizations, actually my second organization. Um, I met with these guys, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, they played against us last year, you know what I'm saying? Of course, he, they won the championship for y'all city. So, of course, they want to put on, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, right, I mean, I'm putting on as they trying to build a sports, uh, fun environment, also teaching them academics, education, all the above. So, it's not just about athletes, it's not, it's not just about sports, it's also about teaching a child to become a man, teaching them responsibility, also anything that you know, as much as y'all know how to play sports too, it ain't just about showing a child how to be an athlete. So that's what I go is like I came here, I'm meeting these guys, also the other guy back there, Mr. Sylvester. And I, I just want we just need help. I ain't gonna lie. Whatever we can do, I, I mean we got our own money, but we know it's bigger than that. So we just need to help the guy out to be able to be police officer. But we'll be we'll be hosting game fair, we we'll change the community around, we'll do whatever we can for us. If you need us to be out there picking up trash, 
put pick up trash. We got kids that need community hours. We take care of that. You know what I'm saying? I go to try to turn this six year old kid to him be out here at 14 years old carrying a gun. I read him carrying equipment. I read him carrying hammocks. I read him carrying anything for the weapon. Not anything. Like that. So that's that's what we're here for. So. Well, I can say we'll have that application in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Miss uh, Linda Andrews. Good evening. My name is Linda Andrews. I live at 366 Southwest St. John Street. I want to talk to you about the property at 338 Northwest Marion Avenue. It is a historical building, and from the plaque on the front of the building, it was the Columbia Bank from 1912 to 2012. It is a grand old building, and I would like to see the city do something with it. You own it because you bought it with the other bank where the customer service is now. Um, I don't know the last time it was used. I don't know what the updates have been done on it over the years. Um, a friend of mine and I were discussing possible uses for this building, and uh, we thought it could be a great location for the city council of Lake City to uh, have their meetings over there in that building once you decide what you're going to do with the city hall. I mean, you've got that building. Um, anyway, um, the friend of mine said that the best way to handle it would be to have the main entrance on the side door at Northwest Hillsborough Street with metal detectors like we have out here and security guard and use the main entrance that goes to Marion Street just as an emergency exit. I'm doing okay here. <laughs> um, there's some, if there's more room in the in there in the back of the building, because the front part would be the way you take your city council meetings, um, we could use that for more offices when you restruct the uh, new city hall or whatever you're going to do. Um, it would need some evaluation to see um, what uh, the condition is of the electrical wiring if the building is that old, um, plumbing. And uh, inspector, do we have a building inspector with the city of Lake City? We do. Okay, that would be something that you could look into, Mr. Johnson. Right. Um, other people may know a lot more about this building than I do. I've only moved here since 1998. I worked for the city for 13 years, so I love the, the city and I really enjoy it very much. And I would love to have you see what you could do with that historic building. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor Bowden. Are you ready to go? Mr. Bowden. Good first, okay. Don't do that something. <laughs> Got this one. Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, Glenn Bowden, 11th and 16th, I was intending to talk about something, but I waited until we get to the island. Uh, I just want to re-emphasize what Ms. Carter was saying. I live probably a quarter mile down from where old Gaspar was driving. And I was not aware that the dogs were able to get portion of her property, but I am aware that the dogs are loose in the area. It's one big white dog, one big brown dog. They don't have any tags around their neck, but they roam the street. My wife, uh, Dr. Uh, Green, is always complaining about them. I go outside, they run off. But the dogs are the problem. Uh, and, and he said, call the dealer, who, whatever. Who is the one called? My dog? The Humane Society. Humane Society. But the problem is, those people in the public, Mr. Carter's number one, they don't even they know anything about the Humane Society. So when she called the police department, it seems to me, if she, when she called them, that the police department, whoever the office is, should take the initiative to make that call on her behalf. Yes, that, that, because they're dealt with the problem. The dogs are running loose. I have witnessed them running loose. I've seen them in the cross street at the positive. I've seen them in my yard. And I got one, a one year old grandson that left me outside. And like Mr. Warren said, that at some point in time, the law enforcement and the government are not going to say anything about these dogs. And people have to take it to their own, own hands because they're dangerous and they're afraid. So I just want to emphasize that. The other point I want to make quickly, Mr. Van, I can speak more to it when we get to it on the agenda. But now, last week, I expressed to the council, the tour council, Mr. Dillon had left, my concern about the tour that he's proposing to have. Uh, at that time, we talked about him going to two or three cameras. Now we're down to two cameras. And I just want to know what this tool includes, where it's going to go to, who will be involved in it. As I said then, 
when one candidate come from out of town, Mr. Rosenstall, and the chief of police being the other final candidate, the chief can have two areas. I got very serious. The chief was a tour uh, member of the city council. And I don't think it's appropriate, no, I don't think it's fair. I don't think as one member of the city council, we have any access to a candidate from the city council or anybody else. Particularly when the city government said he don't intend to have a one on one interview with any of the candidates. But what's happening in fact, seven and a half hours in a car with a candidate that's running for city council, in fact, is an interview. And, for, and not to have a one on one interview, why it may seem appropriate to him, but politically speaking, it's just extremely naive, and I'm just being nice. How can a person glean what, what a man is bringing to the audience to, to the table? When the only contact he's going to have in contact with him legally or allegedly is up there with the council meeting. It's not fair, it's not right, it's a poor expenditure of a taxpayer money. Yes, it may be legal to it. The question is whether it's fair. Is it fair to, to have access when the other city councilmen don't have access? That's a whole hour and a half of taxpayer money. The man coming in the day early, one person to take a tour of the city of Lake City, we don't know where the tour is going to be. They're going to be out. Rest of the time, we'll be long time, we'll take influence, the neighborhood. That should be included. And I, and I said this, I think some, somebody from the community should be involved in this tour if this tour takes place at all. I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's the worst idea I've ever seen since I've become a city council. I'll speak more to it when we okay. get out of the Thank you. Mr. Warren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Warren, you're on the list. Mr. Mayor. Um, we're going to, we need to do something about the dogs. I'm frustrated. When I order the stuff that you're saying, you don't understand. You, I don't know whether you have any Down syndrome or you have any special need kids in your family that's closely related to you and an 80 year old grandma that can't get in her house, that's calling you in the middle of the night for you to come over there and run dogs off and everything. You wouldn't be pouring a order in me if you were experiencing that. And I can promise you that. Um, Mr. Mayor, I wasn't here. Um, I heard that you struck uh, item seven. Did you also strike item 16? Uh, there was three of them. Uh, it was six, seven, and 16. Six, seven, and 16. Okay, Ms. Mayor. Well, um, today, this afternoon, I did send uh, you and Mr. Johnson an uh, email from the Animatics Park president um, as we're requesting uh, some of the uh, opera funds, um, 1.8 million um, that the community is requesting, and some of that money to be used for a supervised recreation program, and at Maddox, uh, being the biggest partial in the city, as far as city parks, uh, 7.5 acres, actually it's bigger than Richardson Community Center, and it's got the infrastructure, it's got the <coughs> school going over there. And Mayor, I think that if we're only asking for 2.5 percent of the opera money to be spent on the youth, and all studies have said that supervised youth programs reduce teen violence and reduce teen pregnancies, why would we not spend 2.5 percent of the opera funds to put in place a organized, supervised recreation department that already has the infrastructure? but it just doesn't have the funds to set it up as far as whole staff is concerned. We will be out of our minds not to take advantage of this opportunity when we have the federal funds and it's not coming directly out of the general funds and we're not have to create the special needs to fund it. And lastly, may I say this, um, I don't oppose uh, the fire truck. It may seem like I do. What I am saying is, is that if we get a fire truck out of the ARPA money, then the things that the ARPA money is designed for, which is affordable housing, is also uh, supervised youth programs, also infrastructure. There's four main categories that the ARPA money is supposed to be spent for. It has been amended so you can use it for other things. But if you're going to use it for the fire truck, I say you do a one point plus a 1.8, which is 3.6, and you create a foundation to solve various issues instead of one, which is going to cause division. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, John Price. Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. John Price, and 
I live over by Animatix Park, and I'm here to tell you, frankly and honestly, I'm not happy at what happened near my, pro my property on the evening of Easter Sunday. I mean, because that day was supposed to be set aside as a celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But what happened over there that evening is loud music and vulgar language coming out of the speakers of those vehicles. And on my immediate block, up and down the street even, mostly it's elderly folks and most of us, more than 98% of us, are Christians. And we don't like that kind of stuff. Baker County already has this kind of a law in place that if you're caught blasting your music too loud, you get pulled over, your stereo gets confiscated and destroyed, and you possibly get jail time for it. Those loud, those big loudspeakers and those kilowatt amplifiers need to be outlawed. And also, me being a blind man that walks out there by myself from time to time from my house to the store and back, that is a safety issue because say you're a blind person and you're trying to get from point A to point B and you're listening to see if it's safe enough for you to cross the street or not. How can you tell if somebody's pulling up next to you and blasting their music so loud that you can't hear everything else that's going on around you? And some of these people even have some of those things outside of their vehicles. And you call the police and tell them about it, but you're being told by the cops that they can't do anything about it because of right to freedom of speech? I'm sorry, but I'm a taxpayer. I want to know what in Jesus' name am I paying for? And if somebody can't tell me that, then somebody please give me all of my tax dollars back because I won't have that. Yeah. Okay. The children, he's talking about uh, <coughs> from six months to 18. 18 years of age, he says, but I think it's six months to 12 years old. And they, nobody should have their children over there. That's how like blasting music or vocal language. Have a nice time. Okay. I'm going to let them say that. Yeah. Motion and second to approve the consent agenda. I'll take this out. I do the same presentation. Old business is done. Okay, out of five is update on city manager hiring process. Ms. Lauren, do you want to speak to that? May I? Sylvester Warren, I don't know what this. Um, out of turn to speak, or is this something that you're going to address, or you just going to give an update? Because we don't have a full council here, so are we going to proceed with number five, or is this something? Actually, I don't what know. I was going to do is just do an update, see where we're at, since we don't have a meet between there. I don't think we should take any hard action because we don't have five. Okay, then I I would excuse myself from the podium. Okay. Uh, Mr. Biden, did you want to speak? I didn't hear Mr. Warren. Of course, I hear your answer. What did, what did you he basically said that we're going to take any main action on this, and I said without the full council, I guess we're kind of set for what we're going to do, and we're just going to discuss if anybody has anything they want to discuss. But the schedule is in place. Are you going to proceed with the schedule? That's my that's my intention. Oh, so it's so no, That's fine with me. Okay. But, but, but let me go ahead and express my concern, ma'am. Not about the. The hiring process, uh, as much as I'm concerned about the, the tool that Mr. Jones is going to take. I, you know, I mentioned a couple of times, but you know, I'm serious about this. Because I seriously think it's unfair. Uh, it's unfair with Mr. Rosenstahl uh, to a certain degree because uh, he's not going to have a one on one. That's his prerogative. The council member can decide whether they want to do it or not. Uh, but it really don't make much sense to me because you talk about how to set a manager. It seems to me that if, 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 if you're talking about something in your district, it's free sign, that, that's, that's, that's it. When you're talking about a city manager, and it seems to me a person I'm going to have as much interaction with that possible candidate as possible. 
But Mr. Judge can say that he's not going to have a one on one suggests to me that his mind is already made up. I mean, what what that says to Mr. Rosenstein? I'm not going to meet with you one on one, you know. But I I, I work with the chiefs as I've known since council. They got ratio with the chief. And but the only thing he's gonna have that for the interview process concerns up here at the city council is it's just not fair. It, it sends the wrong message, you know. And I, and I would submit to you that Mr. Dury have expressed a, a principle in favor of law enforcement over the past since now the city council. And sometimes that can move into being unfair in the process of the city manager's search. So if he's not going to do the one on one with Mr. Rosenstahl, then he should not have access to to. To this tour process because it's just it, it sends the wrong message, you know. And 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 I know that you as a council can't tell him that he can't do it, but certainly you cannot authorize it because I'm concerned that what the tour is going to entail, where it's going to go, who it's going to involve, you know. Are you going to be going out? As I said, are you going to be going out to the interstate? Are you going to go over the area where I live? Are you going to go down, you know, take it to the area where the three murders took place in the past year? I mean, all that should be told to the public. Keep in mind, on that particular day, Mr. Rosenstahl is coming to the lake set on the taxpayer's expense. He's going to be driven around in a tour at the taxpayer's expense, probably in the government vehicle. And I just don't see a benefit to the public at all for one member of the city council to take the chief of police, who done been here for 12 years, who probably can give him a tour, can give me a tour, more likely, and one other person who probably knows as much about Lake City as that he should know as, as a council member. So I want to go on the record saying I'm opposed to that concept. I don't think it's fair. And I think it's, it's, it's uh, almost unheard of that a person would not have a one on one with a county that's going to be a possible city manager for the city of Lake City. And in as much as one of the founders happened to be an employee of the city, it certainly sends the wrong message. And, and I question his fairness when it comes to the process. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Basically, this item's on there just because we got the uh, that schedule coming up a couple of weeks before the next meeting, and I just gonna do an update on it, and uh, without anybody else or the full council here, uh, I don't see we making any changes. Uh, any comments from council members? Keep it like keep it like we've got it here. I think it's a uh, a good idea and uh, to um, uh, since we talk about an update and you, you know uh, some people you you won't be able to do nothing right if they if, if they if they uh, having a one on one uh, uh, I, I don't mind having a one on one I, I didn't. Uh, uh, my name is still there for the one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, and you know, like uh, again, you know, uh, people come up, they, you know, they council members and changing the rules and want to do it like this and oppose this and oppose that. I understand that's their prerogative. However, uh, the five of us, or city councils at this time, and whatever decision that we make, we have to live with those decisions and. Uh, I, I think I, I can be fair with uh, anyone, no matter what state or what country they may come from. Uh, I, I get offended when people tell you that it's not fair. They not they don't have a good. Uh, uh, it's not fair to the person that they may not have a good. Uh, my mind is made up. Uh, that's one thing about it. Uh, you you don't know where my mind is most of the time, so. That's, that's one of those things that people say. They take your words and twist them and turn them. It don't work like that with me. Uh, that's the way it's going to be. And I'll be fair with uh, Rosenthal. I'll be fair with Chief Butler. Uh, and, and I'll be very professional at all times. I just want you to know that. Uh, Ms. Phillip, I, mean, I got your message. We've already had public comments, but. We had to take items off the agenda because a couple of council members had family members on an accident that are having surgery today, and it wasn't fair to discuss that. But why did why couldn't you have just told us before we left work and came here? Eighty-year-old woman came here. It happened last but night. But you couldn't have said that that's not happening. I, 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 we're doing the best we can. People have energy for these people. 
when you get here. Well, well the there's, no way, there's no way for me to have known it, let y'all know this afternoon. I just couldn't have done it. Uh, number 8, City Council Ordinance number 2024-2271 for reading. Mark, will you read that by title? Uh, I have a, yeah, we left that one. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, you have before you uh, Ordinance number 2024-2271, an ordinance of the City of Lake City, Florida, relating to compensation of the Mayor and members of the City Council, amending Article 2, Section 2-53 of the City Code of Ordinances, providing definitions, providing for compensation amounts, providing for procedures to address compensation amounts, providing direction for codification of this ordinance, repealing all ordinances in conflict, providing for separability, and providing for an effective date. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you will recall, uh, and this actually predates my tenure as city attorney, but the uh, city council had a discussion about how it sets its salaries uh, and, uh, and the, the process you go through and whether the uh, salary adjustments are uh, indexed to the same uh, uh, raises, if any, that general employees get, or if the council has to take specific action. Uh, the direction, as I understood it, that was given to the city attorney at the time and, and then uh, flowed to us uh, was to draft an ordinance that required the city council to take specific action uh, to uh, change its salary amount from one year to the next. Uh, if there was no action, then the salary would uh, continue as it was in the prior year, and that's uh, the, the gist of this ordinance is it would require the council by July 31st to uh, to change its salary if it chose to do so. If it didn't do it by that date, uh, then uh, the salary would remain the same and same into the next year. Uh, and there is a clause that says that uh, any increase in compensation expressed as a percentage uh, in a fiscal year may not exceed the general employee wage adjustment applicable uh, to uh, the, the fiscal year where the raise was to occur. So, so there is that limit. You couldn't raise it by more than what you were raising the, the wages for the general employees. Okay. So. And Mr. Mayor, if, should the council wish to adopt it, the appropriate, on first reading, the first the uh, appropriate motion would be to adopt Ordinance 2024-2271 as read by title only. May I? I'll, I'll repeat that. I got one on my seat. Okay. Um, I just want to clarify from the city attorney that when we had that discussion, it was that the city council could not uh, get a raise without a resolution. Is that part of that? Yes. So, so this does require a resolution. A resolution. Yes. Right. So, so in order to get a raise, that would be a separate, it won't be a part of the budget process. Exactly. Am I correct? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the, the process that is contemplated in the ordinance would be that uh, on or before uh, July 31st of a year in anticipation of the upcoming budget uh, workshops, the council would express its desire for a raise if it wanted one uh, and uh, do that by resolution uh, so that that resolution can be taken into account as the finance director and city manager and other staff are putting together budget. Uh, we would have to word the resolution in a way that uh, would allow uh, the uh, city staff to take into account that, uh, uh, and I guess the best way to do it is to throw a hypothetical. Let's say the council said we want a 5% raise. Uh, the city uh, staff, the finance director comes together and says, well, we can only afford a 3% raise for all general employees of the city we would have to word the resolution so that the city council notwithstanding they wanted a 5% could only uh, go to a 3% because that's the limiting language of the ordinance and that would be the limit based on the raise to general employees of the city. Uh, I understand that. Would the resolution take place before the budget process? It would take place in, so the resolution would have to occur before July 31st. So that'd be before the budget process. Before the budget process. Okay. That, that's what I, that, that's my question. So we, we would know going into whether or not the, the public wants you to have a raise or not. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just want to be sure that the, the resolution will take place first. But you, you get that. I, I understand. Okay. I just want to be sure that the resolution was important. I spoke to it in the past, so the resolution is right. important to me. 
yeah. that you would not be able to, no longer city council just vote themselves away without it as a part of the budget process. You can take that one with you, Mr. Bell. Okay. But anyway, I, I think I got it. As, okay. long as, as long as there's going to be a resolution authorized by race, I don't care if it, I don't think it's going to be clear, but as long as there's a resolution going so I can speak to it. Right. Okay. Mr. Warren, do you want to speak? Mr. Mayor, um, my concerns is similar to uh, Mr. Bowden's. Um, I heard what Mr. Bowden said, but I don't know whether or not it was coherent enough for me from the attorney as to whether or not there would be public input able to be applied during the resolution process of a potential raise by council members. It would be brought up before July 31st, before the budget process, and it would be just on the agenda like that. And then you will, and the, the public will have an opportunity to speak. Okay, so that's that's fine. And Mayor, while I'm at the podium, um, I know that we did a 3% increase. Um, I find it very unfortunate um, that when Joe Heffenberg was here, um, I was able to convince him to do a, um, a study. Uh, I think he used the Evergreen uh, study uh, to see where uh, people's salaries were and where um, uh, entry-level employees uh, were making money. Um, I find it um, to be an insult uh, to Lake City. You can go to one county over, which is Baker County. Uh, you can even go to White Springs and make more money uh, working for the town of White Springs or the town of Baker County as an entry level employee than you can to see of Lake City. Uh, what type of appreciation and what type of financial commitment this council is willing to make to the employees that are on the ground floor in ditches, digging pipes in sewer plants that make people like you all that get elected and directors look good and everybody at the top is making the money but these guys in the bottom of the uh, holes and in them sewer plants which you wouldn't go in, I definitely wouldn't go in I've seen them in knee deep in, 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 in um, mess, sewer mess. That is ridiculous for the amount of money that y'all pay them. I don't even see how y'all can sit here, make up a budget, and justify the police department got a raise, the fire department got a new building, and you mean to tell me that the general employees, all the guys are 3% across the board raise? That is insane. That is insane. It, it ain't fair, and I don't know how y'all sleep at night knowing that these people are on call all night long and if something goes wrong you can stay asleep and they get a button hit they gotta wake up and jump up and go fix it it ain't right i'm just telling you it ain't right they scared to come up here and say it but i say it for them y'all owe them money okay is there a motion by city council as to order number 20 24 22 this may move to approve ordinance 22 or 22 4 Dash two two seven two one for tree. Okay. I'm sorry. Seven. Mr. Mayor, I, I was going to comment on this before we, we did that. Would that be okay with you? Um, I, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not for this uh, this ordinance at all. Anyway, uh, I mean, we 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 have been. Uh, I, I know I've been coming to city council for I don't know how many years. And every year you get this particular raise, and, and now people have benefited from that raise. And now uh, we're coming up with a city ordinance, and then we're discussing this right now uh, about a raise, uh, whether it's three percent, ten percent, whatever the case may be. Uh, I don't think that uh, this ordinance uh, should not even be here. That's my opinion. And I will not second. No, I will not second that. Yeah. I'm gonna second it for a 
and we can't, I mean, we don't have a full council here, and I, I'm, I don't know how the other councils feel, but uh, to approve this ordinance um, without, without them being here, and it goes forward two to one, uh, I just don't see uh, that happening because Thank we do not have a full council. Thank you. I forgot what I was, Mr. Park mentioned that we did vote as a full council. And I don't remember if it was three to two or four to one. But I don't remember you did, and I can't remember what that was. But let's see how that goes. Okay. Let's talk about it. He wants to speak here. I was just going to say, uh, I think this, this I think this sets a good precedence. Obviously, I'm I'm pretty new here, but um, when I go around and talk to folks, I don't think a lot of them think we deserve to get raises. I don't think this council is uh, in a position at the moment to say that we do. I like the idea of doing a good job for a while, getting a lot of good things done, and then coming and doing it. You know, we can look our community in the eyes and say, "What do you think?" And you say it's our first. And I, and I, Miss Mayor, Mayor. And I totally agree with that, okay? Uh, but you, you don't know some council's uh, position. You, you, you can get my raise to the, uh, uh, to one of the parks around uh, the city. I don't need the raise. However, there's some people who need that raise, whether they're sitting on the council or they're in the, uh, uh, in the public eye. Mr. Mayor, just yes. this is in regards to our pay specifically, right? right? Yes. Okay. And this is the first break. Yeah, we'll get voted on okay. yeah. at the next meeting. Anything else? No. This actually called roll. Mr. Carter? Yeah. Mayor Wood? Yes. Mr. Jernigan? No. Okay. Uh, next is out of nine city council ordinance number 2024 22 uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilman, you have before you Ordinance 2024-2272, an ordinance of the City of Lake City, Florida, amending the text for Lake City Land Development Regulations as amended pursuant to an application LBR 24-01 relating to an amendment to the text of the Land Development Regulations providing for amending section I'm sorry, amending subsection 13.11.3 entitled Action on Site and Development Plan concerning providing notice and hearings for consideration of site and development plans, providing severability, repealing all ordinances on conflict, and providing effective date. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, this ordinance is before the council uh, as a result of the hearings involving the, uh, the Circle K application from earlier this year. Uh, if, if you recall, there was uh, some uh, confusion based on the language of the land development regulations which said that a, uh, a hearing and notice was not necessary and that conflicted with the general state of the law as uh, articulated by the courts and this uh, amendment would uh, remove that language from the land development regulations so that we do not have that conflict and they would conform with the general state of the law. Okay, this is the quasi-judicial uh, This one is not necessary. Okay, so that's Okay. All right. Mr. Warren, do you want to speak to that? No, sir. I'm talking to Mr. Davey. I don't know, sir. I don't think I can speak to that. All right. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion on City Ordinance Number 2024-2272 on first reading. Second. We have a motion. I second. Any discussion? Mr. Jarnia? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mayor Wynn? Yes. Okay, uh, next is uh, City Council Ordinance 2024 2280. Uh, would you read that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a quasi judicial hearing uh, on an annexation. Uh, Ordinance 242280 uh, uh, is uh, based on an application. For annexation from for voluntary annexation for Victory Land Holdings LLC. Uh, if I may ask before proceeding, uh, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak to this matter tonight other than uh, city staff's general presentation? What is it related to? It's annexation and annexation of property. I, I can't identify exactly where the city staff can tell you where the, the property is located. 
Mary, you like it for me to answer that? Yes. Real tears out there by what's on? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, at this time, uh, I would uh, ask the uh, members of the council if uh, they've had any ex parte communications with anyone outside of this meeting regarding this particular matter. Uh, Councilman Carter? No. Uh, Councilman Dernigan? And Mayor Witt? No. no. Okay. Uh, and of course, the purpose of the uh, proceeding is to make sure that everybody receives a, a fair hearing. Uh, we would hear from a summary from city staff first. It doesn't look like there's anyone else to speak on the matter. Uh, if that remains the case, uh, then uh, after uh, reading the ordinance by title only, uh, it can, uh, I will instruct you on the law and it can proceed to a vote. Uh, it's an ordinance in the city of Lake City, Florida, uh, pursuant to petition ANX 24-02 relating to voluntary annexation, making findings, annexing certain real property located in Columbia County, Florida, which is reasonably compact and contiguous to the boundaries of the city of Lake City, Florida, and to the boundaries of the city of Lake City, Florida, providing severability, repealing all ordinances in conflict, and providing effective data. At this time, Mr. Young uh, from the city's growth management department would uh, provide a, a more robust summary of the uh, application. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? So if you got, I did. All right, thank you. This is a petition from Victory Land Holding LLC. Uh, this is for voluntary annexation from the county property, bringing it into the city. Uh, it's currently zoned uh, commercial CI, commercial intensive, by the county. This is, uh, I guess you'd call it phase two of Winsong Apartments. This is where they want to expand. And this is uh, the gist of it for now. Sure. Uh, let, let me, uh, if you just, I mean, just a second, uh, and you're going to move your uh, staff report into evidence and provide it to the city clerk. At the yes, here I am. All right, thank you. At this time, Mr. Mayor, it would be appropriate for members of the council to ask any questions of uh, Mr. Young. Thank you. So, uh, 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 let me make sure I heard this correctly. You said the county is going to annex into the city. No, sir. It's currently in the county. It's being voluntary. The owner of the property is voluntarily requesting it to be annexed into the city. It is contiguous with the city. The current zoning on it by the county is commercial intensity. <coughs> okay, that makes sense. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, are there any other questions from council? No, I have any. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Mayor, the decision of the city council should be based only on the evidence provided by the sworn witness. Uh, the application may be adopted if the uh, property proposed to be annexed is contiguous to the current municipal boundary, if the property proposed to be annexed is reasonably compact, and if the application for voluntary annexation bears the signatures of all owners of property in the area proposed to be annexed otherwise complies with applicable state laws and does not confer special privileges or rights on any person. At this time, the council may discuss the application and the testimony and uh, vote on proposed ordinance 2024. Dash two two eight zero following an appropriate motion and second. The motion has to ordinance twenty twenty four dash twenty two eight. Ms. Gett, Mr. Mayor, uh, move to approve City Council Ordinance twenty twenty four dash twenty two eight. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion by council? Do we need to give any reasons at this time? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter. Yay. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jernigan? Yes. Mayor. Yes. Okay, next is item 14, City Council Ordinance number 2024-2281. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Mayor. Let me get it pulled up on my screen here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, you have before you ordinance number 2024-2281 ordinance of the city of Lake City, Florida relating to activities interfering with public safety and public roads, repealing ordinance 2021-2183 in its entirety, repealing ordinance 2022-2220 in its entirety, amending chapter 98, article 5, section 90, 
98-70 through section 98-73 of the City of Lake City Code of Ordinances providing direction for codification of this ordinance, repealing all ordinances in conflict, providing for severability and providing an effective date. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this uh, ordinance uh, repeals the city's uh, law that uh, governs the issues of uh, panhandling at intersections. It's come to the attention of legal staff through the Florida League of Cities that uh, the uh, city's current ordinance is uh, not in compliance with the state of the law on the First Amendment as articulated by the federal courts. Uh, and, uh, and this would repeal it and uh, we would, uh, it's such a departure from where the courts are right now that uh, we would just start over from scratch uh, at the direction of the council. Mr. Warren, did you want to speak to this? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, thank you for recognizing me. Um, on this issue, I, I find a few things uh, very disappointing is that we're quick to rush and judge the panhandlers. And I understand what some upper enchilant people may feel about people of a lower status. And to repeal it, fine. Where's the solution that you have in place to help those folks that are panhandling that may need help? That's the problem that I have with this council, and that's where I find that y'all lack the wisdom and the ability to be solution-oriented. You want to find a way to get rid of the panhandlers, but you don't want to find a solution to help them. There's never been a discussion as to how we're going to help the homeless, but there's a discussion as to how we're going to keep them uh, from asking for money. And the second thing I'm going to point out to if them people can't stand up there and ask for money, I don't want to see no kid charity group up there in the middle of the, um, the medium asking for money. I don't want to see no uh, uh, fire uh, 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 rescue people up there with the boots out there talking about they want to uh, got the boots out there for money. If it go for the panhandlers, it's going to go for everybody. Ain't nobody going to be in the mediums. That's how it should be. It need to be across the board, now. If a regular citizen can't stand out there and ask for money, then the, the uh, people who be standing out there for car washes and the uh, fire departments, when they be having their poop drive out there, all that's out the window in. Fast, fair, and right is right. If you're going to do it across the board for the panhandlers, the least of us, you're going to do it for the high enchilons as well. And does that fail or not, Mel? Yeah. Thank you. Their motion is in council of 2024 and 2281. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, approve city ordinance number 2024-2281 on first reading. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? The second call the roll. Mr. Durgan? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mayor Bitton? Yes. Okay, item 15 is for <coughs> informational purposes, and item 16 was. Uh, Move on the uh, comments of council. Mr. Mayor, I have a, a quick question um, for uh, Mr. Johnson. We spoke very briefly about it, but I have heard from a few citizens concerned about the uh, the maintenance and uh, care at Memorial and Oaklawn Cemetery, who are uh, properties owned by the city. Apparently, they are quite overgrown. Um, a lot of people got a lot of loved ones out there. So. Yes, um, to give an update of how we got here, um, the city owns two cemeteries, and we have been responsible for all the lawn maintenance for as long as I can remember. Um, so recently, it was an incident that occurred where a headstone got damaged, um, which made the question arise of whether we were responsible for maintaining the plots after they are sold. After consulting with our previous legal counsel, it was said that, you know, once they are sold, they are private property. So, however, out of respect for the deceased, um, I recommend that we continue the maintenance of them. I mean, just out of respect for the deceased, like I said, to help. Maybe we can use a third party contractor to do a contract to get these things taken care of. But um, if we go out there and start mowing the right of ways and individual plots are not mowed, it's kind of going to look a mess. So we sold these, uh, and I can't ask what the intent was to the people that was in there. So I said that, you know, if the council gives me the approval, I'd rather go ahead and start soliciting for a contract to get these cemeteries kept up the way they should be. I agree with that. I hear complaints too about it. Mm -hmm. I have it ever since I've been here. And I knew in the summertime, 
Mr. Cohn, when I first got elected, running me around and showed me how much y'all have to keep up you know, with the airport and the parks and the right of way. And this is no fault of public works. Public works, I mean, it's just different times. But when I when I remember doing this, we had inmate crews, numerous right. of them. So it's no fault of lack of work from public works. They're doing a great job. I want right. to make that clear. All right. Any other comments? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could. Um, uh, this past weekend, they had a, um, activities out here uh, by the uh, by the pavilion out there. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out to. Uh, Prom and Crust Bakery, that's Felicia and uh, Alex. Uh, they're trying to get a place here in Lake City to start their business. Of course, they're from, uh, I think, Brantford over there in that area. So they're trying to get here. Uh, they are really trying very, very hard. So I like to give uh, uh, Johnson and uh, Miss, uh, what's your lady name there? That does all that. Terry, Terry, Terry Phillips. Yeah, Miss Phillips. <laughs> uh, for bringing them in. You know, they're trying to get a business going in here. So we we try and we we that's what we want. We we love those businesses coming in, and also Kiki Sweets. Uh, that's owned by Kadra Russell or something like that. She's also trying to look for a building uh, that she can start her business uh, here in Lake City as well. Um, uh, Life's South uh, Blood Bank. Uh, Miss Megan out there, they're looking for, uh, they're in need of blood really, really bad. So if you know anybody who they get blood like every eight weeks or whatever, they're really short of blood. So if you go out there, you, uh, Megan is out there and she's waiting to, uh, uh, to get your blood. So uh, please um, help out with that. That is a very, very good cause uh, when you get blood. Uh, that's all I have here. Mr. Mayor, I, and one more thing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, next weekend, uh, Ms. Phillips has, has organized a multicultural event right. we're having downtown. Um, I think if, if she'd like to uh, tell us a little bit about it and for everybody watching at home, one more, one more uh, reminder of what we got coming up. Sure. Sorry I didn't bring anything back. Um, we're going to have a multicultural event this um, weekend. It starts at 11 o'clock and it goes to 7 o'clock. We have 22 food trucks. Over 50 vendors for the arts and crafts informational booths. And then we also have two dance studios that are going to come out and do different um, culture dances. It's okay. Um, different dances. And then I have jazz, reggae, and music like that that we're going to have going throughout the whole time. So we'd love for all of you to come out. Mr. Jarnigan's going to come out while Mayor comes out. And um, Mr. Johnson comes out every event, so I'm very thankful for that. But it's going to be a really good event, um, and I hope that all of you have to come out and see us. Did you say it starts at 11? Starts at 11 and goes till 7. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for all your day. Thank you, Ms. Phil. Is there a motion to adjourn? One last question on the first, uh, first topic I brought up. Do we need to give Mr. Johnson specific? Uh, no. If y'all have the consensus that. I mean, this step the moment only when I bring it, so I'll move forward with that. Up to adjourn. Second. All right. All right. All right.